When the hour came for the celebration of the Passover, Jesus took his place at table with his apostles. And after he instituted the Eucharist and the priesthood, he said to his new priests some things about their ministry. And there are a few lines from his talk with them at the Last Supper that we can apply to ourselves today, his present-day priests. For one thing, Jesus talks to them about humble service, saying, who is greater, the one seated at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is good for Jesus to remind us, his priests, that he is among us as the one who serves. He serves his priests. He sustains us with his presence, and he is the one who makes our ministry effective. You act in the person of Christ, and your parishioners are attracted to you because you show them that Christ is present and that you desire to serve as Christ. Without complaining, without counting the cost or the inconvenience, you give of yourself in joyful service. The promises you will affirm in a few moments say, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls. You are important persons in the lives of your parishioners. Your parishioners hold you in very high regard. They look up to you because you are humble servants in the image of Christ. You are an integral and essential part of their lives. You are their spiritual fathers. Why is this cathedral always filled to overflowing on this day? Because the faithful love their priests. Your parishioners love you. How was it that the Lord settled on you to be his priest? It was not because of any particular talents or gifts that you have. It was a gratuitous choice on his part, a free decision to show you his love and call you to be his instrument of salvation. How humble the realization of this fact makes us. After telling them that he is among them as the one who serves them, he then goes on further in the Last Supper discourse to say to his new priests, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. The sifting is always occurring. You pass through the mesh of the sieve, maybe every day. And the most important remedy to the turbulence and the turmoil and the tossing and the sifting is a healthy spiritual life. Constant and daily prayer, daily mass, regular confession of sins, keeping our attention fixed on Jesus. The way the question is worded in the renewal of priestly promises we are about to affirm, are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves? Why are we asked if we are resolved to be more united to Jesus and more closely conformed to him? Isn't it enough just to be united to Jesus and closely conformed to him? But the ritual asks us, will you be more closely united to him? Mm -hmm. 
Is it that we are being asked to be more than we were last year at this time? Beware of the sifting which could impede our spiritual progress. The sifting occurs as Satan plays on our weaknesses and sends temptations our way, but the remedy is always Jesus, union with him. Further on in the Last Supper discourse, Jesus says to his new priests, the apostles, when I sent you forth without a money bag or a sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? When I sent you on mission, were you ever in need of anything? We trust in God's providence to supply what is needed for his work Without money bag or sack of belongings, the apostles had only the message of the gospel as their prized possession. Everything else was provided for them as they went along on mission, simplicity of life. Are you in need of anything? Jesus says, hasn't all been given to you? In every parish, God has placed generous lay faithful who are eager to help their priests in all the needs of the parish. Moved by the Lord's grace and love, they desire to enter the service of Christ in his parish. They love you. They respect you. They look up to you. They want to collaborate with you in the mission of the parish. Are you really in need of anything? Finally, as the gospel narrative continues now after the resurrection, Jesus appears to his new priests and says, look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. Look at my hands and my feet. Spend time looking at him every day in a holy hour and at daily mass. As the peasant who appeared that day in the church of St. John Vianney, look at the good God as he looks at you looking at the hands and the feet of the risen Christ will keep us attuned to that great love of his which allowed his hands and feet to be pierced for you. Look at him. And see the image of Christ in all your parishioners who look to you for guidance, for direction, for inspiration in following Christ and for the charity of Christ to be revealed to them in your person. Four words of Jesus to his priest during these holy days which we are about to enter. I am among you as the one who serves you. But behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. Are you ever in need of anything as I send you forth on mission without a money bag or a sack of belongings embracing gospel simplicity? Look to me, look at my hands and my feet. It is really I who am with you.